Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Disco Elysium with me, Frank Don. Now let's talk to, I believe her name is Joyce. A striking woman leans against the cabin top of her sailing boat, smiling as you approach. Her green raincoat glistens with droplets. A silk scarf is tied around her throat. Good evening, officers. I'm Joyce. She extends her hand in greeting. Joyce L. Messier. I represent the board of Wild Pines, the owners of the harbor. You gentlemen must be from the RCM. She steps closer and holds out her hand over the railing. Uh, Joyce L., what does the L stand for? Baton, my maiden name. Her bony hand dangles from the sleeve of her oversized raincoat. Uh, shake her hand. I'm glad to see you here. Her grip is tight and cold. I was dispatched to handle a strike, not a lynching. Anything I can do to assist the RCM in this matter, I will, gladly. That is good to hear, madame. My colleague will take the lead on this interview. I should let you know that he is recovering from an unusual medical episode. Very unusual. But I can assure you of his ultimate competency. He opens his notebook. There's a trace of irony in his voice. Mischief, even. This is a tactic. How interesting. I wish you a swift recovery. In the meanwhile, you have my full cooperation, and the full cooperation of the Wild Pines group. You're on a boat. Why, yes I am. <laughs> she looks at the deck under her feet. Green and white sails flutter overhead. Not a lot of people on boats, are there? Of course there are. We're on an archipelago. How else are you supposed to get around? She looks around. Wait, we're on an archipelago? Look around. Yes, we are. We are on Le Caillou. She raises her brow. Still, I haven't seen anyone else sail a boat around here. I haven't seen anyone else drive a souped-up Coupri Kenema motor carriage either. Actually, that motor carriage has been specially issued to serve as a patrol and pursuit vehicle. The lieutenant becomes defensive. It's for crossing long distances in the Greater Ravachol Industrial Harbor. It's not a toy. Neither is this. A toy, I mean. It's a machine for crossing long distances in the Bay of Revachol, between the city and the islands. The woman pats the cabin hardtop. You need to make this lady admit she's only riding around on this boat because she's rich. Um, why? Why what? Stop thinking. Take her down. It'll come off like I'm envious. And I'm not. You're not? Okay then. Just keep on admiring the boat then. Unburdened by envy. Does she have a name? The boat? No. It is called Cordelati 19, because that's the type of sloop it is. The word it feels strange. Such a beautiful boat deserves a proper name. Cool. But your boat really needs a name. Okay. How about Cordelachi 19? Why? She taps on the side of the boat. It makes a hollow sound. Because it was manufactured in Revachol East by a company called Cordelachi, and its hull is 19 paces long. How about Dolores? Why Dolores? I don't know. Feels pretty. Hmm. Well, it means nothing to me. I think I'll stick with the factory name. But thank you for the suggestion. Okay, but what kind of boat is it? It's a pleasure craft. A 19 pacer. It also happens to be rated for Category 1 racing. Though these days I mainly use it for business. How do you like it? My slew? I like it a lot. It's the eel's hips, baby. Her lips curl into a wry smile. I'm enjoying this part of the interview. It has so little to do with the murder we're investigating. I really do, the lieutenant thinks. Is she thrown off yet? He's looking at the woman, assessing her. Do you have a license for this boat? Officer, I assure you I'm a highly qualified pleasure craft operator. The crowns of her teeth are porcelain, white as the boat's hull as she smiles. Qualified pleasure craft operator. So charming. Where's the damn license? Can I see your license? I just renewed its safety inspection last month, officers. It is completely seaworthy. In fact, it's taken part in not one, 
but two in cylindric regattas. Even finished once. What happened the other time? The other time, I would have finished the race were it not for an urgent work matter, much like the one I'm on now. Still need to see a license, ma'am. Actually, you don't. What do you mean? The Wayfarer Act specifically denies the RCM the authority to demand anyone's operator license. It's a little known fact among us law officials. The Wayfarer Act is one of the few pieces of legislation governing human interaction in the Revachol Zone of Control, along with the Emergency Trade and Ailments Acts. The what now? It's one of the foundational laws in Revachol, designed to limit the authority of local institutions. Part of it prohibits the RCM from requesting most documents and licenses without permission from a coalition representative. It's a law that keeps Revachol what it is, in limbo. Uh, wait. Exactly how little known is this fact? I was just being polite. Even school children know the Wayfarer Act. <laughs> so we can't pull over random civilians to demand their papers. That's weak. Unless it's their passport. No. Do you want to ask for the lady's passport? Uh, yes. I'm going to need to see your passport. Of course. She searches the pockets of her raincoat, producing a bundle of documents in a sealed plastic bag. Look at her passport. The woman is silent, smiling while the waves lap against the hull. In your hand, under the plastic, a light blue passport saying, Republic of Vespa. The coat of arms has a lion and an ostrich. Segent. The Republic of Vespa. Formerly, the Republic of Vespa Messina was once a dual kingdom. An amicable parting of ways produced two constitutional monarchies. Vespa, the richer of the two, is an occidental nation known for its proximity to the Pale and its exotic financial derivatives. Anything else? It is a stable country, and yet there has always been something ominous about its perfect stability. It's a place at the edge of the Mwindi Isola, overlooking the Obisunt Isles, fracturing into the great unrest of the Pell. Look at the photo page. The woman, born in the year three in the commune of Revachol, smiles at you, face adorned with frown lines and crow's feet. The photo is recent. The name reads, Rejoice Leighton Messier. Your name is Rejoice? Yes. But please don't call me that. Why? Joyce is much more efficient. She doesn't like it. Probably a bad memory. Mean girls at school or some ancient lover. You're from the Republic of Vesper? My husband is. I have dual citizenship. A Vespertine is handier when traveling. Everything appears to be in order. Give the documents back. She nods and returns the plastic bag to her coat. I think I have a handle on the boat thing. Good. She takes a sip of her thermal cup. Uh, tell me about Wild Pines. What do you do? What we do? I'm afraid I don't speak for Wild Pines as a whole. It's a giant undertaking. There was a touch of discomfort there. She wants to merely represent. So what do they do? The Pines' core competency is logistics. Container shipping, freight, that sort of thing. See those airships there, blinking? Those are the shipping side of things. She points to the small dots on the horizon. And that is the terminal. Another subdivision deals with energy, oil and gas exploration, offshore platforms. Then to the east, toward the harbor. The Wild Pines Group is one of the original Revacholian Indo tribes. Companies awarded royal monopolies by the king, the suzerain himself, centuries ago. The king is long gone. But several of the Indo tribes remain. Who are the other Indo tribes? Son Baptiste, L U M, an unknown entity known as Brightest Star. You are in good company, it seems. Why, thank you. She does not register the real meaning of the remark. How much money does Wild Pines have? I'm not at liberty to discuss the company balance sheet, but I can tell you that last year the company booked more than 20 billion real in revenue. That's it? I thought Wild Pines was supposed to be big time. And to think, there are years when the group books losses 
in the billions. Away pits the sloop. She grasped the mainstay for ballots. Warpines employ 72,000 people, all of whom have families that depend on their salaries. It is a tremendous responsibility. Where does Wild Pines get all these billions? They started as an exploration and cargo fleet conducting trade between the Samaran and Insulindian Easterlers 250 years ago, when pine ships explored the South Seminese and charted Lormantang on behalf of the suzerain. Centuries of care, deliberation, and madness have gone into this endeavor. Vessels pass through the great unrest to re-emerge with apricots in tow. The logic of the system is totalizing. It's taken everything from its employees to build it. It probably helps to start out with a royal monopoly. You know more than you let on. Certainly it helped, but most of the original Indo tribes have failed or been absorbed. To survive, Wild Pines had to grow and adapt. No suzerain did that. She takes a sip and looks you over afresh. Hey, we made an impression. And what is such a huge system, or with a place like this? Look around. You mean aside from being the terminal's legal owners? Who are responsible for moving 8% of the world's cargo? She gives you a little smile. 8% of all cargo in the world. That's quite the endeavor indeed. There are no minor cogs in the system. Each terminal must be accounted for, lest the entire system break. Every hiccup in such a system means thousands lose their jobs, the world over. I'm here to assure that doesn't happen. She nods forcefully. So we locked a new thought. The 15th Indo tribe. Wild Pines, Feld, Cupris, or Cupri, Tricentennial, Villiers, and La Sa Sal Salier? Salier? Names of Revisholian Indo tribes spring into your head, let loose at the mention of Wild Pines. Royal Monopolies, Octopuses, and Swordfish. Most of them gone now. YBP, Expander, St. Batiste, Brightest Star, LUM, Resplendent, East, uh, Insulindic, Welter, and Elkaset? But isn't one missing? Wait, no. There are only 14. Then why do you feel there was a 15th Indo tribe? Where do you have 20 points towards this as well? Right? No, that, never mind, that's my level up. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's unlock this. What does it do for me? No bonus for uh, researching it. We'll put that on anyway. With your help, hopefully, says her warm tone. Oh, uh, what can you tell me about this strike? Everything. Right up to, but not including, trade secrets. She smiles. Wait, what if I want to hear about trade secrets? First, you'd have to repeal the Emergencies Act of Trade and Elements. That gives me the right to silence. It's quite the octopus. An octopus? I will slay it. Good luck is only kept in place by the vested interests of half the civilized world, including your own. What the man means is that the Emergencies Act and the RCM both get their authority from the coalition government. You'd be shooting yourself in the foot, in other words. All right, I'll leave it alone. But I am derailing us. You wanted to know about the strike. What is your role in this precisely? I believe the official title is Senior Labor Negotiator. In practice, I'm a grocery clerk. I relay the union's demands to Wild Pines and return with Wild Pines counteroffer. And how are the talks going? They're not. That's the problem. The Union stopped all negotiations a week ago, after that awful lynching took place. And that further reinforces my theory that the man who was hanged was an assassin sent to take out, I assume, Everard Clare. And uh, maybe not by Wild P Pines necessarily, but they assumed that it was. And so they stopped negotiating. Now they won't even let me into the harbor. There's a 2 meter 20 racist behemoth blocking the gates. Uh, tell us more about this behemoth. What can I say? The Union employs a giant covered in tattoos. A racist giant. I guess that's part of their big tent organization now. She pauses. How are the talks going before the lynching? Let's say I was not making the kind of progress I'd hoped for when I first arrived. And when did you first arrive? I arrived three weeks ago. 
Yes, in the middle of February. The bay was still partially frozen then. I prefer to do these things on site, like the RCM. She thinks. But the strike began in December. He looks at his notes. I wasn't the original negotiator here. I took over after Mr. Gaumont hit a wall with Mr. Clare, the union boss. Mr. Clare refused to speak with Gaumont despite concessions he'd granted the union in prior negotiations. This isn't the first time the union has gone on strike? Heavens no. There have been two prior strikes. Both times the union won significant concessions, including overtime pay and a medical plan. This time their demands are more, I guess you could say, aggressive. No, not overtime pay and a medical plan. Ludicrous even. It's meant. What happened to this Gumant? Mr. Clare told him to... How did he put it? She pauses to compose herself. Fuck off, midget. Gomont is short of stature, you see. Gomont, not Gumont. Uh, not cool. Keep in mind, this is a negotiator Mr. Clare has worked with before, and who was more than fair with him and the Union. What are their demands? There are leaflets everywhere, and banners. What did they say again? Oh, yes. Every worker, a member of the board. Most of the workers probably don't know what that means. So are they saying that everybody gets a say on the board? Yeah, it seems like they have no idea about business. In its defense, another said, demand democracy. Pretty tame stuff compared to every worker, a member of the board. What does that even mean? It's quite simple, you see. Every time the Wild Pines group makes a decision about what? About anything, really. It needs the signature of each of the 2,200 workers in its Martinez terminal. Yeah, that doesn't sound very efficient. Just so you understand, this is but one of 22 terminals owned by Wild Pines. Essentially, not only are they kings of the company, they are also kings of the 72,000 employees of Wild Pines Group. That's pretty funny, I have to admit. They're having a blast. But how can they afford it? After four months, my assumption was they would prefer a more practical solution. What are you going to do? I'm not sure. Naturally, I assume that was just their opening position. A hard-nosed tactic with a side of mockery. But there's been no follow-up. Just the same nonsensical slogan repeated over and over again. Yeah, plus it wouldn't be fair for the 2200 workers here to have a say on the board where the other, what, 6,000... Or sorry, 69,800 or whatever. Don't get a say. Because she said, what, 72,000 employees? And now, people are getting lynched, I hear. Behind the whirling in rags. A disastrous situation if there ever was one. And even if they gave this union a say on the board. I mean, getting 2,200 signatures is no, no small feat. I mean, that's just hugely inefficient. There's probably a better way they could handle that besides... Passing around a piece of paper and trying to get 2200 signatures. Uh -huh. I've had to collect signatures for like 16 and 20 people before, and that, that was a chore enough, so. Excuse me, from whom did you hear about this lynching? Lieutenant looks up from his notes. I first heard it from the boyer at the gates, the one whose very name advertises his aversion to work. I think he said it was, Call me Manana. Her reply comes quick. This checks out. Are the scabs at the gate? Did you put them there? The scabs? You mean the huddled masses of Jamrock come to plead for work where the Union refuses to? She raises her brow. If they were organized by Wild Pines or its affiliates, then it would be a company secret. I could not share it with you. Not right now, at least. It's implied. She's open to discussing this matter with you at a later occasion. Does that mean in the morning, or just later in general? Uh, tell me about this union boss, Mr. Clare. Everard Clare is a man of the utmost integrity. If you can say one thing about him, it's that he always puts the interests of the workers first. Really? Of course not. Everard is fantastically corrupt. I imagine he has a thick, viscous goo where you and I have blood. Is he that bad? 
He is the most corrupt individual I have ever seen, and I deal with men like him for a living. If there is anyone more venal, more irredeemably nepotistic, then it's his twin brother, Edgar. Wait, there are two of him? Yes. Edgar looks exactly like his brother, except for that lazy eye. He also talks exactly like Everard does, and when one's term as foreman is up, the other takes over. It's how they circumvent the term limits, you see, with a funny little switcheroo. While in office, they've embezzled God knows how much of their workers' dues. What about the union itself, outside the Brothers Clare? The Debardeurs Union was once a perfectly normal institution. Twenty years ago, anyway. It must not have been easy to establish under the Emergency Act, but they did it. I can respect that. Organized labor at its best, as they say. Then something happened in the local chapter elections. The Brothers Clare came and transformed it into a... How do you say? She hesitates, looking for the right expression. A mob. The Debardeurs are a crime syndicate. Sad as it may be, I suspect we'll be forced to cooperate with them. Lieutenant says succinctly. Refreshingly honest, officer. The company has tried appeasing in the past, but I'm afraid our concessions have only emboldened Everard and his brother. She nods, then she turns to you. And your opinion, detective? If I may ask. I'm a curious and talkative person, you see. Would you say the Debardeurs Union is... She explains. Well, I'm going to trust Kim's opinion on the matter, so I'm going to pick option two. A giant leech sucking the life out of Revishol. Indeed. And a hungry one. Sadly, while Pines have cooperated with what amounts to a crime syndicate for two decades, however much you feed the leech, the leech always hungers. She nods. Uh, one more thing. You said something happened in the elections. I'm glad you asked. There was a woman, the previous forewoman of the Union. She disappeared. Disappeared? Yes. On the last day of the local chapter elections, her daughter phoned in and said she wasn't running anymore. Or coming to work. Ever. End of story. Some kind of extortion, probably. Indeed. The company suspects foul play, but there's nothing they could do. It was a Union matter. The point of the presentation is... These kinds of things happen around the Clares. Watch out when you're dealing with him. Thank you for your concern, ma'am. We'll be just fine. That's all I need here. Let's change the topic. Of course. How else can I help? She passes the thermal cup between her gloved hands. What can you tell me about this lynching? Quite a few things, I'm afraid. She falls silent for a moment, contemplating something. The information I'm to share with you includes sensitive trade secrets. For the sake of my employer, I have to ask for your names and badge numbers. Uh-oh. Of course, ma'am. We should have introduced ourselves. I am Lieutenant Kitsuragi, from Precinct 57. Lieutenant hands her a piece of blue plastic. And this is my colleague from Precinct 41. I'm afraid he doesn't have his badge at the moment. I hope mine will suffice. He points to you. How curious. Why is that, Detective? She returns the Lieutenant's badge and turns to you. Awkwardness washes over the conversation. The woman doesn't like this turn of events. Remember my partner to told you I'd recently suffered from an unusual medical episode. My lost badge is related to it. I see. So are you saying you lost your badge during the course of this episode? Now she looks increasingly worried. It's possible. After a night of heavy drinking, I lost all memory of my life and the world. Oh dear. I suppose this does explain some of the more curious turns in our conversation. She sighs with compassion. Sadness, even. She must have been suspecting something for a while now. As I said, ma'am, his technique may be very unconventional, but he is an officer of the RCM. Lieutenant interjects. Of course, I sympathize. But I'm afraid I simply can't share anything more until I've seen that badge. Hang on. She's a professional negotiator. She should be open to some sort of mutually beneficial arrangement. What kind of arrangement would it be? I mean, favors for favors. A dirty alliance of some sort. Consider this. Perhaps she has been planning it all along. That you convince yourself into colluding with her. How do I negotiate my way out of this? 
feelings will guide the way. But madam, I need to know about this lynching. It's very important to me. It's the case I'm solving. I assure you, it is no small matter for me either. We all share the responsibility for disarming this situation. I hope you have a badge for me as soon as possible. You don't understand. It's not like a side case for me. This is my main thing. No, let's do two instead. You have so much else. I have only this. Spread your hands. This is the entirety of my existence. She's silent. The wind flaps the sail above her. This boat, for example. In a home somewhere. I only have this case. Officer. The carbon fiber hole creaks. I don't remember anything except this lynching. There's only this coast and this lynching. You know, I don't mean to sound cold, but if you want something, you have to give something back. More than just guilt. She puts her foot on the guard wire. You're doing it. Despite your own best efforts, you're still getting in. Somehow. I'll be frank with you. If I'm going to break protocol, I need to be able to justify it to my superiors. They're going to want to see something tangible. Like what? The Union is conducting drug trade out of the harbor. It's an open secret in Martinez. Surely it must not come as a complete surprise to the RCM either. Perhaps it's time to look into it. Or you can find your badge, which honestly seems like a lost cause. Detective, a word in private before we continue. Lieutenant closes his notebook. Excuse us for a moment, madam. Wow, you work hard. I do? Oh, yes. You hustle. You're a provider. It's tough out there, but you keep it real and provide. I guess I do, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like a horse. A workhorse. For hard work. What hard work do I do exactly? Look at yourself. You're a human pedometer. You must have walked 200,000 steps down cracked asphalt, mosaic, sand, and lelonium after you re-emerged. That is the sign of a hustler who never gives up. The world is harsh and people are evil. You didn't make it that way. And you won't let it break you. You ride. Yeah, yeah, I freaking ride till I die. That's just what it's like. Life and death. But you got gills on your side, baby. Got those black papers with the faces of the innocents on them. You bring in the Franco Negros and the Solas. It ain't easy, but you do it. Day in and day out. You didn't make the rules, but you won't lose. You're a cop and a sprinter and a money printer. Oh, and then there's potting stuff off to that suspicious Roy guy. Yeah, you're in the sales business. Shake them for shit and then pawn it off. Law officer style. I guess I've made some gills, sure. Sure, sure. And has it been easy? Is life easy? Have you not gone into cardiac arrest? Are you not about to have an anxiety attack or shoot yourself in the mouth? But you still hustle 24-7, ride or die. Now, ask yourself, are you rich? Uh, no, I'm actually not. That's right. You work harder than anyone. You almost rode yourself to the grave, and you're still practically a hobo. Why is that? Freaking taxes, man. <laughs> That's right. 100%. <laughs> Fucking G-Man's got his jam-covered sticky fingers in your pocket, stealing from you every time you buy, sell, walk, talk, fart, so much as sneeze. Aren't taxes almost non-existent in the Gossamer State that is Revachon? Yeah, I thought there were no taxes. You and I both, but they got those indirect modes of taxation. Sales tax, excise duty, extraction tax. This tax that doesn't even have a name. Plus, there's the stuff people in other countries pay for that makes them ask for more money from you here. The Gossamer State's a myth. In total, the coalition government is taking 98% of all your money. Opt in. No freaking way. 
I guess I'm a free market fundamentalist now. Here you go, hustler. Fight the righteous fight. Free the people. Keep it real. Keep it street. Keep foaming at the mouth furiously on the tax issue. So we just got another thought. Indirect modes of taxation. Say like minus two empathy while I'm researching. It doesn't take long though, so no, only an hour and 45 minutes. So first, if you have a side ideology cooking somewhere, don't sweat it. Fight an indirect taxation for the Gossamer state. It's compatible with all creeds. It's cool like that. You're a cool anarchist now. Unless you don't want to be an anarchist. Whatever. Stuff this meal ticket in your eye socket, and let's see if we can steal some love back from the robber barons at the customs agency and the banditos at the Insulindian Financial Oversight and Competition Committee. Alright, well I can't equip it yet. What does he want? This is not going quite as I hoped it would, Detective. Now, the lieutenant's voice is hushed. How did you hope it would go? Honestly, I was expecting you to use your unorthodox technique to keep her off balance, and you know, not volunteers to be her henchman. Really? I thought it was going so well. This woman is running circles around us. She might have known about your misplaced badge all along, or she's simply an adept improviser. Either way, we've played straight into her hands. I mean, I, if I didn't fail a 72% check, I would have been fine, but... He doesn't let it show. But there is a limit to how much the consequences of your unprofessional behavior can cost the investigation. Maybe this is all her plan. She might have heard about you. We, we could just, you know, find my badge. Oh, that would be fantastic, but do we have the time? The world is large and your badge is 8x6 centimeters. He nods slowly. The situation might have changed drastically by the time you locate it. Time is of the essence. You could request a new one from your station, but that would literally take months. The company must have ears on the ground. She could have known about my condition. I wouldn't go that far. Her reaction did come off as sincere to me. I think she's just quick to adapt. She's a professional, after all. Yeah, her proposal was likely part of her design. This is all. Or this all is. Yes. Knowing this does not really change our position, however. What do you propose? That we don't investigate the drug trafficking? No. If there is reasonable suspicion, we must investigate. Otherwise, she could claim we are siding with the Union. Or that we are on their take. We'd never hear the end of it. What I propose is, we ask her, then we investigate. Briefly. But do not share the outcome of this investigation with her. We tell her it's done, and demand for her information on the lynching. He adjusts his glasses. I'm sorry for putting us in this situation. I'll handle it. I'm sure you will, detective. Alright, let's get back to her then. You're back. Good. What can I help you with at this late hour? She takes a sip from her silvery thermal cup. Uh, it's night. Don't you ever sleep? Matter of fact, I don't. She takes another sip. Why is that? I have a medical condition of my own. Nothing unusual, though. I'm old, you see. Better not to poke further. Well, that's good. That's so you can answer me some questions. Of course. That's what I'm here for. Okay. Tell me about this alleged drug trafficking. It's quite straightforward. Someone is using Terminal B to smuggle raw ingredients from the Samaran Isola into Revachol with the Union's blessing. Wild Pines has suspected it for years. Ingredients for what, ma'am? Meth and dextroamphetamine, GBL and various synthetic psychedelics. Honestly, it might be quicker to say what you can't make from the stuff. Let me get this straight. The materials come from Samara to Revishol through the terminal. Yes. After they clear the terminal, we lose track. The actual production is taking place at various sites in and around Jamrock Quarter, north of here. Wild Pine seems to be well apprised of the local drug trade, man. Do you mean to say the Union also produces the product? Sells drugs, I mean? We're in logistics. It's our business to know. And no. As far as the company knows, the Union does not produce it. They transport the ingredients for a cut. And you want us to investigate? Yes, but you won't get anything out of Everart and the Dock Workers Union. Still. Every chain has its weak link. 
She raises her bony finger. The handoff. The motor lorries at the roundabout. The lorries. Precisely. Someone needs to move the ingredients from the harbor into the city. Once they reach Jamrock, they're distributed to a network of local manufacturers well beyond our grasp. But in transit, they're vulnerable. How convenient that they're stranded like beached whales at that roundabout. Perhaps you've noticed that a number of lorries are tangled in a traffic jam at the roundabout just now. Interview the drivers who are still hanging about. One of them might be waiting for a crucial shipment. She gives you a knowing look. I'll be explicit. If you find this driver, I will share company secrets with you. Uncovering union secrets could also give you an upper hand when dealing with them. Why didn't you come to the RCM earlier? We did. On more than one occasion. Apparently, there's some sort of inter-precinct disagreement about whose jurisdiction this area falls under. We know the company has launched its own probe into the union's alleged involvement. We also know it's come up empty. It's not just the RCM. No one's been able to find any hard evidence. Well, here's your chance, officers. She smiles and points towards the roundabout. It's no co coincidence the lorries are stranded there like that, is it? No. We asked East Motor Track to raise the drawbridge. The road company is a partner of one of our subsidiaries. However... She pauses, looking to the sea. This is a limited time opportunity. Once the complaint has been processed by the Trade Committee, they'll have no choice but to lower the drawbridge, and the operation will continue. She looks north. Thousands of litres of raw ingredients will pour onto the streets of Revachol. Not the east across the river, but the west. The vulnerable. The weary. Well, at least this solves one mystery. What is that, Lieutenant? Why I had to call East Motor Track and beg them to open a drawbridge for me. I'd wonder since I first drove in, on my motor carriage. I am sorry for the inconvenience, Lieutenant Kitsuragi, but we need them trapped here. This is a unique opportunity. I'm sure you understand. What proof do you have that the Union is involved? How do you think they're financing this strike? There are thousands of unpaid dock workers going strong for the fourth month straight. There was a shakedown of local businesses preceding the strike. Many were squeezed to bankruptcy to fund it. With all due respect to these desert cacti, the contents of a few cash registers cannot provide for 2,000 men. The local businesses can scarcely provide for themselves. So you think the strike is being funded with source ingredients for drugs? Precisely. Smuggled out of that very gate at night most likely, then loaded onto lorries and driven to Jamrock. You simply need to find one driver who will open up to you. Where do you have some suspicions that one of the drivers was present at the lynching? The two might even be connected. Or not. Though, if you have evidence to the contrary, I'm eager to hear it. As eager as I am to share it, Lieutenant, once the job is done. I remember finding out what evidence do we have there's a driver at the lynching. Okay, I made up my mind about the smuggling investigation. Yes? We will take this case, probe the drivers, see what it yields. Excellent. The According jam mystery. According to my reports, there are at least three lorry drivers lingering near the roundabout. Hopefully one of them will know something. She takes a long sip of tea. It may come to nothing, or it may just blow the case wide open. I can keep the drawbridge up for a few more days at least. You should have the time you need. In the meantime, let me know if there's any other way I may be of assistance. She takes another long sip from her seemingly bottomless thermal cup. Do you know something about these tattoos? Show her the photo. That's the man who was killed. I'm afraid this is a discussion for once we've cleared the lynching question. She almost takes the photo, but then stops. So you know something about the tattoos? Better not tie the fourth day to the back stay on this. I hope there is something else I can help you with. She wants to answer the question. Protocol keeps her from it. That's the man who was killed. I'm afraid this is a discussion for once we've cleared the lynching question. Uh, why? How is he looking at the photo tied to the lynching? Better not tie the fourth She though. wants to answer the question. Protocol keeps her from it. Uh, you seem smart. I need someone to give me a lowdown on this reality we're in. This reality? She pulls her hood closer around her neck. Yes, reality is your side case. 
an experimental side case. Yeah, this is the other quest that we had, finding someone smart to give us the lowdown. It's related to that medical episode. I have trouble remembering even the most basic terms of reality. Ah, yes, the episode. Sounds like an acute case of encephalopathy, now that I think of it. She puts down her thermal cup and looks at you. Don't be faith, madame. He functions perfectly well. He only needs a low down on all of reality. We may be here a while then. Ask away, officer. I'll help however I can. She takes a long sip of tea. All right, we're in. I know these all look good, but begin with the first, okay? Uh, where are we? We're in Martinez, baby. Baby. A casual term of endearment popular among the 50 plus crowd. It's a disco holdover, pay it no heed. I'm a disco holdover myself. <laughs> Aren't we all? She smiles. She refers to your corresponding ages. Mm-hmm. And what is Martinez? Martinez is a district of Revachol. A very small district tucked away near the industrial harbor. North of the 881 and Jamrock. She looks around. A green raincoat flapping in the wind. You would be excused for not knowing about it. Unimportant, they say. Forgotten, even. Shelled to smithereens during the revolution. It has its charms, just not this time of year. She shrugs. Uh, tell me more about Martinez. I'm not a good ambassador. I've only been here once before. As a teenager. Not a lot has changed. There are ruins, a terminal, fishing boats, reeds, boys with boxy shoulders. She closes her eyes. This place used to be a province, a workers' resort before the city swallowed it and the artillery did its work. The reeds are the real star of the show here now. The further down the coast, the wilder it gets. She opens them. You mentioned a sea. What sea is this? It's not really a sea, it's the Bay of Revachol. And the bay feeds into the ocean. Are we near the ocean? Yes. We are on an island in an ocean. The world's largest body of water. The Insulindic. Known to the early river Sholians as Les Immensités Bleu. The Blue Immensities. Vast. Lukewarm and unknowable. Flowing in and out of sight. What's the name of this island? Caillou. As you already know. Imagine a pebble, a smoothed over pebble amidst a great blue sea, misshapen, cracked. The cracks are the river Esperance. We're in the delta of this river on the sixth branch, the Martinez distributary. She looks to the waters. It is clear this pebble is of enormous value to her and to humanity at large. Okay, that's Martinez. What's Revachol? Revachol? Revachol is what you call a city. What kind of city is Revachol? The great kind. As if it's self-explanatory. Beyond patriotism. A fact. What makes Revachol great? History, detective. They built this city to resolve history. Our part in it, at least. Our centuries. Okay. Who built the city? The nations of the Occident. Or migrant workers from Seminine and Il Mara, depending on your creed. When was Revachol built? In the DeLorean century. 380 years ago. And why will it resolve history? They say it's where the terrible questions of our time will be answered. The tensions are highest, the fault lines deepest. By that I mean conflicts. Ideological conflicts. The stuff of men. Why here? We are standing on a fertile, self-sufficient island able to sustain up to 200 million people in the middle of the Insulindic Ocean, the world's connective tissue. It's where the money is. She smiles. So we're pretty much at the center of the world. Oh, we're quite a way off. About... She points across the water where the skyscrapers rise. 22 kilometers from the center of the world. That soldering iron is the bank of the world building. The bottom floors are Insiacom. Coalition government, Insulindian Mission Command. Look to the sea. Silence. She lowers her hand. The water, the light. 
it's as though you're seeing it for the first time. There is no recognition, only the immensity of the sea and the cold radiating from it. Where are we? We are where we are. I have no truer answer to give, unfortunately. She watches you closely as you scan the horizon. This is one thought you need to complete. Where are you? Was there something else you wanted to know? I remember something about a lowdown. This has been informative. Thank you, ma'am. I'm sure my memory impaired partner has many more questions to ask about even more fundamental aspects of reality. He turns to you. Might I suggest not asking them all right now? Ma'am Messier will be here later too, and tomorrow. Isn't that true, ma'am? Absolutely. My commitment here is long term. But I want to know everything now. That is understandable. But perhaps it's better not to eat all your candy at once. Indeed. I'm always at your service. Why is my conceptualization so low? I mean, maybe I should pick up another time. I Man, I want to finish it up, but uh, we're going to be here for a long time. So maybe I'll wrap it up here and continue talking to her in the next one. Uh, that's all for now. Glad to have been of assistance. The little that I know. Anything else? <laughs> you seem rich. Can I have some money? Is what you want to say, but it isn't that easy, is it? What? Why not? Look at that lady. Take a gander. Squint your eyes, bub. What lustrous hair? A well-kempt, yet tastefully short bob of dark hair. Despite the first hints of grey, she's elected to keep it oh natural, shaped into a permanent wave, late forties style. While dull orange pearls hang from her hair lobes, red from the cold. Her light green eyes scan you, full of knowledge and worry, wealth and all its possibilities. These are the kind eyes of the rich man that seem to say everything is possible, within reason. Yeah, so? Now look at you, you misery clad simian, barely able to tie your own laces. Your armpits are lakes, a scythe of booze precedes you. Your hair sticks to your forehead, and your underwear feels uncomfortable. You're poor. Poor as balls. You can't ask this person for money. You're too. I'm not ashamed. Oh, but you are. Too ashamed to ask this person for money. Too scared to belittle yourself in her eyes. Those half precious stones of Erdenin. As I was saying, if there's any way I may be of assistance, please don't hesitate to ask. Can I have some money? I have a very low chance of succeeding. I am sorry. It just doesn't come out of your mouth. What does is. Money. Excuse me? I didn't hear you. Did you say money? Her voice is kind, a little hoarse from the wind. Uh, no, I didn't. Let's talk about something else. Of course. Well, thank you. That's all for now. Of course, detective. Take care. All right. Rigorous self-critique. Here it is. Hard facts from the man you are. You once jerked off in the locker room and were caught. You held a young woman by the arm and kept her in your apartment for 20 minutes against her will. That's right. These are not flights of fancy. These are real deeds, Harry, emerging from the darkness of your past. You tried shooting a fleeing suspect in the foot, but hit him in the pelvis, crippling him for life. And above all, you let life defeat you. All the gifts your parents gave you all the love and patience of your friends. You drowned in a neurotoxin. You let misery win, and it will keep on winning till you die or overcome it. Well, that's a lot. And I guess her name is Harry. 
So instant side red check failures heal plus one morale. Then physical and motoric check red checks failures heal for one health. Learning cap for pain threshold raised to six. Ah, that was a that was a rough thought. Um, all right, I'm gonna call the episode here, and the next one will continue talking to Joyce. I'm gonna interrupt the conversation because there's so much to talk to her about. Uh, I don't like interrupting conversations like that, but this would be like a probably a two-hour long episode. Uh, so we'll continue talking to her until I guess 2 a.m. I think is when we're forced to go to sleep, according to the tooltips. At least that's what it makes it sound like. So. We'll get as far as we can. If we can't finish that, the next day we'll turn in that curse quest, come back here and continue speaking with her about the uh, lowdown of reality, and uh, just see what all we can get done. Also, in the second day, I do want to get that body down, so after I finish talking to her and the bookkeeper, we will go and talk to the union to try and get that body taken out of the tree. So I would like to get that done as soon as possible. Either way, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.